to worship with each of you on this first Sunday of Advent. Whether this is your first time or you have been attending St. B for years, whether you are joining us in person or worshiping with us online, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And there's a joy to worship with you. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Hope is gravity for the broken. Pulling us up. Hope is manna in the wilderness. When you want to give up. Hope is seeing stars in the city. When we forget the stars Hope is the anthem of faith. So come to this place with your hopes and your fears. For the God of the life is drawn near. Let us worship, holy God. I invite you now to Turn to the back of your bulletin for this week's announcements. This Wednesday night, we will be starting our Advent Bible study. 
which will be on our Advent theme of What Can't Wait. We'll be exploring scripture through images. And if you have not attended a Bible study up to this point, you don't need to worry. We will be, there's no prerequisites for attending our Wednesday night Bible study. If you can come to one, but not all, we hope that you will join us. That's at 6 o'clock on Wednesday nights in Heritage Hall. Also, we still have our poinsettia orders going on through this Wednesday, December 1st. There are slips in the back and on the table by this door next to the card, the Christmas card box. So if you would like to order a poinsettia in honor or in memory of someone, the cost for each poinsettia is $8. So you can fill out the slip and put it in the offering plate or bring it to the church office. The Christmas card box is outside these doors right here. If you have Christmas cards you would like to bring to the congregation, you're invited to put them there. It is all alphabetized and will save you a little bit on stamps. So that is available and will be available throughout the entire Advent season. Finally, this Saturday at 9 a.m., UMW will be having a Christmas brunch. You are invited to bring a five to ten dollar gift for an exchange. We'll also be making packages for our homebound members, so please bring a small item to include. We'll be making nine bags, so please bring at least nine of whatever item you bring. If you have any questions, please or wonder what items you need to bring, please see Margaret Fisher. Are there any other announcements this morning? Seeing none, we will now move into our time of lighting the Advent wreath. May the light of this candle burn inside of us this week, inspiring hope and action of God's promises, promise day. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as we decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek you again. Please stand as you are able. As we sing together, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, hymn number 196. abounding in mercy and steadfast love. 
Help us remain alert and watchful for the coming of your promised one. The one who comes with power and glory. The one drawing near to bring our salvation. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Hymn number 211. We'll sing verses 1 through 4. In my house, our Christmas tree has been up for the last two weeks. This past Friday, we put Christmas lights on the outside of the house, which has been a dream of mine since I was a little girl. 
I've been listening to Christmas music regularly since October. And man, am I tired of waiting for Christmas. <laughs> We're entering the season of Advent, which is a season of waiting. And I feel like my Advent season started in October, the first time I said, Alexa, play Christmas music. But we're in this season, this season of waiting for the coming of the Messiah. Throughout Advent, we will be asking the question, what can't wait? We know the difficulty of waiting in this season. For Santa to come, for loved ones to arrive from out of town, for the end of the busy season that is Christmas. And we have our list of things that need to get done. Cleaning the house, buying presents, going to the grocery store, Christmas parties on top of all of our other everyday things that we have to get done. So as we prepare for the coming of the Messiah, we ask ourselves the question, what can't wait? But in order to identify the things that can't wait, we must first identify what can. The cleaning and laundry and buying presents can wait for now. The things that can't wait are being present with our family and friends, being aware of the turmoil that is happening around us as we continue to live in this pandemic. Seeing our neighbors in need and responding to those needs. These are the things that can't wait. And this week, we affirm, we acknowledge, we know that God's promised day can't wait. Hope can't wait. This morning we heard both the words of Psalm 122 and these words from Isaiah. And both of these texts speak to God's promised day. A day when wars end, swords are beaten into plowshares and spears become pruning hooks. Theologian and author Walter Brueggemann says of this Isaiah text, that is, it is a vision. An act of imagination that looks beyond present dismay through the eyes of God to see what will be that is not yet. That is the function of promise and therefore of advent in the life of faith. Under promise, in advent, faith sees what will be that is not yet. The city of Jerusalem in this time of Isaiah was deeply impacted by the great powers that governed it. It was vulnerable and marginal. It either lived and flourished or suffered at the hands of these great powers. Within the uncertainty, this poet imagines a majestic future for the city. And it's not simply a political, religious triumph for Jerusalem. But it is one that is entirely fixed on God. It is one where peace prevails. It is one that is entirely transformed from the economy to the earth. Looking beyond present dismay through the eyes of God is truly what we are called to in this Advent season. As we prepare to witness to the miracle of the birth of Christ, the birth of our Savior. 
We see the present dismay around us. We feel the division, the hurt, the needs of the world. And they feel insanely huge. They feel as though I, as an individual, could do nothing to ease this dismay. There's too much of it. Reverend Victoria Stafford wrote an essay titled, The Small Work and the Great Work. It's found in the book, The Impossible Will Take a Little While, Perseverance and Hope in Troubled Times. In the essay, she says, once you have glimpsed the world as it might be, as it ought to be, as it's going to be, however that vision appears to you, it is impossible to live compliant and complacent anymore in the world as it is. To live compliant and he goes on to say, we stand where we will stand, on little plots of ground, where we are maybe called to stand, though who knows what that means. In our congregations, classrooms, offices, factories, in fields of lettuce and apricots, in hospitals and prisons, on both sides at various times of the gates in streets and community groups. And it is sacred ground if we would honor it, if we would bring to it a blessing of sacrifice and risk. Our mission is to plant ourselves at the gates of hope, not the prudent gates of optimism, which are somewhat narrower, nor the stalwart, boring gates of common sense, nor the strident gates of self-righteousness, which creak on shrill and angry hinges. People cannot hear us there. They cannot pass through. Nor the cheerful, flimsy garden gate of everything is going to be all right. But a different, sometimes lonely place. The place of truth-telling. About your own soul, first of all, and its conditions. The place of resistance and defiance the piece of ground from which you see the world both as it is and as it could be. The place from which you glimpse not only struggle, but joy in struggle. And we stand there, beckoning and calling, telling people we are seeing, asking people what they see. Once we have glimpsed the world as it might be, there is no going back. In Isaiah, he glimpsed the world of what could be, and there was no going back. A place for peace, a place where instruments of war are turned into instruments of peace. And when we see that, we plant ourselves at the gates of hope. And hope is not feeble. Hope is not infallible. Hope is not a cure-all. But hope is deep within us. We feel deep hope as we wait for the coming of the Messiah who will turn the world on his head. We practice hope as we plant ourselves on the ground to which we are called. Martin Luther King Jr. said, We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. We discover this infinite hope as we witness the inbreaking of the kingdom of God among us. We discover infinite hope as we yearn for God's promised day and work to make that day a present reality. We discover infinite hope in the Christ child. We hold on to infinite hope so that we can continue dreaming of and reaching for God's promised day where there will be peace and all will know love.
we have this infinite hope that is rooted in the miracle of Christ. We have this infinite hope that emboldens us to stand firmly on the ground to which we are called. We have this infinite hope which invites us to be people who continue to bring about, about the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. This infinite hope gives us the strength to show people that they are loved. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your cities. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say to you, peace be with you. To you, my friends and family, I say to you, infinite hope be with me. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. At this time, I invite the ushers forward for this morning's offering. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I want to direct your attention to the back of the bulletin where you will find our prayer list. Are there other joys and concerns you would like to share as a community this morning? Kim? I, uh, I got some rough news about my grandfather last night. 
We want to lift up Pam and Remy and Cam's grandfather. They are headed to West Virginia to be with him on Friday. And so we lift them up both in their travels and Cam's grandfather. For all, for all those who are having surgery this week, we lift them up and we lift up the nurses and doctors and all who are in the room, both pre-op and post-op. Are there any others? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day for another opportunity to gather together and worship you. We come to you this day waiting, waiting for the birth of our Savior, waiting for the inbreaking of your kingdom, waiting for your promised day. And God, we know that our waiting is not idle, but it is active. In our waiting, we are actively pursuing you. We are actively planting our feet in the places you have called us. We are actively working to spread your kingdom on earth. Oh God, we know that in you we are given the strength to do so. In you, we face challenges. But we never run out of hope. Oh God, we lift up to you this day all of the prayers of our hearts. Ones we share aloud and ones that remain deep within us. I'm ready to be spoken aloud. Sometimes prayers that are beyond words. For we know that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf and you hear each and every one of our prayers. Oh God, be with us in this busy season. May we always remember to point back to you, to point back to the miracle of the birth of our Savior. our Savior, who calls us beloved. And our Savior, who taught us to pray, and that we pray together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, our closing hymn is, O Come All Ye Faithful. Hymn number 234, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Please stand as you are able. <laughs>
Thank you. 